Matt check. Yo, check it out, yo. Check it out. Break it down, break it down. We gonna make some whiskey. Not any whiskey, but corn whiskey with a little bit of rye and some other stuff. <clears throat> All right, ready? Yep. Well, hello there, YouTubers. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Well, we decided we we're gonna make a video really quick on <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> hey, did you take it on COVID nineteen? <laughs> yeah. How to make it? Put into your whiskey. So yeah, we're gonna make a very simple, straightforward, uh, easy to do corn mash for y'all's. And now somebody's just gonna walk through our shot <laughs> like she owns the house. <laughs> oh, what are you? <laughs> Just start from the top. Get rid of all that. Let's just start from the top, dude. Hello there, YouTubers. Howdy. <laughs> Haps New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Let's hope so. <clears throat> well, what we decided to do today for you folks is go ahead and show you a very simple corn liquor recipe. Very simple. We're going to try to break it down as easy as possible, you beginners or, you know, whatever, and make a real nice corn liquor. And it's... it's Fantastic, believe me. Very good, very simple, easy to do. Uh, we'll show you the recipe that we use, basically. We're using three grains. We've got some corn. This is flaked corn that flaked we're using corn. this time. We've got some rye. We've got some flaked rye. Good old rye. And then we got these bags of these nice grains right here. This is a two-row uh, barley, malted barley. We're going to go ahead and grind all this up. So we're running 10 gallons of mash. 10 gallons. So behind us, you'll see two pots, both with five gallons of water in it. We're gonna run five pounds of corn in each, two and a half pounds of malted barley in each. And we're gonna go ahead and step up our rye content just a little bit. We used to use, just use two of these, which is how much pounds is that right? One, one a piece. Okay, okay, and that's two pounds. But we're gonna double it today. We're trying something different because we want a little something more on the back end. We're gonna see if it works. I'm sure it's gonna be fine. We'll see if it rounds out that heat right on yeah. the back end. And, and if you can't do all that, it's fine the way it is. So overall recipe for 10 gallons of mash, we're doing 10 gallons of water, 10 pounds of corn, five pounds of malted barley and stepping it up to four pounds of rye four pounds of rye along with 20 pounds of sugar all right now we've got our our water heating up to melt our sugars we got our grains laid out what we need to do with all these grains is we need to grind them up and that's a bit of a doings but not really much we got a blender or whatever you know one of those fancy things that they, they use on those cooking shows we don't have that we have a blender right we do not have a great grinder but we have a great blender and it takes a couple few minutes and it's no big deal it's kind of fun absolutely it makes some fun out a little of it dusty mm -hmm. a little dusty from time yeah. to time uh the sugar we won't blend we don't need to worry about blending that but we're going to go ahead and uh blend our corn up put it aside blend our rise up put it aside and uh and blend our malted barley up, and we'll be right back with you when it's we're very done exciting. doing that. We don't it's want very to, exciting. You don't want to watch that. Make fun out of it. It's real simple. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to watch this. So now that we've uh, ground all our grounds, we got our corn in each. <laughs> Bless you. Mazel tov. All right, now that we got all our uh, grounds grounds corned up. Okay. Ready? Take 1,200. All right, now as we got all, all our uh, corn ground up and our grains ground up, we got two buckets over there, five pounds of corn a piece. 
Uh, and then we got our rye and our malted barley ground up in the same bucket. First thing we're gonna do, we've had these pots baking over here and uh, they're up to temp right now as far as, uh, as far as milk and sugars. So I wanna let the audience know that there's not just two of us country rads here today, we've got a helper. We do. We do, his name is Joseph's Bob. Not Joseph Bob, Joe, Joseph Joe Bob's, Bob's here. here. Joseph Bob, come on in here, you're gonna help us stir up some sugars. And Joseph, Joseph Bob is a up and coming shiner. He's only six and a half years old. Come on in here, Joseph Bob. Come on, show your little curly hair. All right, what are you gonna help us do? Your birthday is on Tuesday. His birthday is on Tuesday. His birthday's on Tuesday. So climb up on there. Not every Tuesday, just this upcoming Tuesday. We're gonna go ahead and give we're gonna go ahead and give Joseph the drill here. Uh, you can stir with a paddle or a spoon or whatever you like, but here. If you don't have rad. a fancy drill like us and a fancy stir and stick, then Hold you can you know, you can there, use a paddle or a slotted spoon or it doesn't matter. You can use a stick. But here at Country Rad, we like to give little and kids power tools. Slowly, what we're gonna do is slowly stir this in. Get that go. Hold me on the back. I'll hold you right oh, here. Okay, get that stirring around a little bit, Joe. Get it stirring. Get it stirring. There you go. Just let it rip. <laughs> Let it rip. Let it there you go. Let, Let it, it rip. Let it go. Let it rip. Oh, oh okay. No. Let's slow down just a little bit there. Here, let's do this. Let's do this. There you go. A little more. Just a little. Just a little. Just a, just a little, little bit more. more on the trigger, boy. Pull. There you go. Perfect. Just like that. There you go. A little more. Go. Go. There we go. There we go. A little more. Come on. Put your feet on it. Don't be shy. Get a little circle that's going perfect. there. Right that there so that's perfect, right there, Joseph. That's perfect, Joseph. Just keep it right there. Perfect. And what we're going to do is we're going to stir it till it gets clear. Yep. Until you can't see no more cloudiness. Keep going, until buddy. The, the sugar's all dissolved and it's nice and clear. Nice and clear. It might be a little bit of a golden tint, but you're looking for basically a clear liquid once the sugar's all dissolved. That's, that's what's going on. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was having a sneezing attack. Markalicious. Okay, let me put my shades on. Here you go. Now he's real Markalicious. Okay, let's go. All right, now we got the uh, sugars dissolved in there. It's like a nice golden color, clear. A nice golden color shows you got all the sugars dissolved. Nothing baking at the bottom. We're gonna start adding our corn. Get that going. We're using power tools. You don't have to use power tools. You can use a good old spoon. Whatever you want. And make sure the water's clear. The sugar is clear. It's not cloudy. Stir it up a little bit. Might seem cloudy. Get it all heated up. And, and when it gums clear, then you're ready to you go. Just want to make sure all them sugars are dissolved. Then we're going to start adding our grains. We like to just start with the corn first and get that going. It's like we're making grits. We've got a big pot of hot sugar water there. We're going to add some nice dried up corn. We're making a big batch of grits, basically. And that's what we're doing. Here, you want to do ahead. it? You want to yeah, do it? I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the stir. You want to get the drill going there? Get that drill going there. Be careful, because now you don't want to shoot this sugar water all over the place, because it's like caramel. It will stick to everything. So what's going on now is he's getting like a nice volcano going down at the bottom of this. I'm gonna just pour that corn down in that volcano. If you don't, if you start seeing clumps, you don't want to see that. Just stir them clumps out a little bit. You don't you don't want you clumps. Add, add it slowly, nice but you know. So we do. There nice we go. We're making we're making some polenta. Is what we're doing. Now I've got down. some polenta on my face. He's got a nice whirlpool. Not a volcano, I guess a. A negative world, volcano. That's a whirlpool. whirlpool that this is sitting down in. And you're it's going to become thicker and thicker. You're feeling it getting thick. And that's, that's why we like to take our time. Because we want this all to, to, to mash in. We want it all to... It's not going to absorb everything like the sugar. And oh. the reason why we started off with five gallons per pot is because the amount of grains that we have needs enough water for everything to kind of absorb and get in there. If you use too little amount of water, you just end up with a thick clump and you end up scorching is what you end up doing. The very last steps is we're gonna go ahead 
after we got our corn all mixed in, like like Marco Bobby likes to say, we need it to combine. We need it to combine. You want to get it as combined as you can. This is our uh, rye and malted barley. We're going to go ahead and put this in the pot. Same way. Let's go ahead and just... It's pudding time. It's pudding time. It's going to get thick. Don't worry. Oh, you want to go over there? Okay. Let's, Let's do this one over here. here. Let's do this one over here. And nice and slow. We're all circling the drain. Just do it nice and slow. Keep it. Keep you don't have to go that slow. Come on. Come on. You just don't want it to clump up. You just want it to all come together now. It, it, smells, it smells like a big batch of grits. Right down the middle. Don't hit the turbometer. All right. Burn so. Up. Now that we got the grains in there, the corn's in there. Are we still filming? Sugars. Oh, well, hell yeah. Hi. boy. I got some caramel corn. You got some caramel corn. We're going to let this sit, corn. like I said, 148 to 158 degrees. You start to convert the starches. You can do that for one hour. You're going to have to monitor this a little bit, depending on your stove. You got to come in and check it, turn it down, turn it up. Once you get it down in between about 100, 48 to 158. My target is 150 to 155 just because that's how our stove works. Don't go over 160. All right, so now uh, <clears throat> our meal mash has been cooking on the stove. Our right. grits. Our, gr our grits. These motherfucking grits. Right Moonshine here. grits have been cooking on the stove for uh, just, just about an hour. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the, the the mash, liquid, solids, everything into our mash tun, which is where we'll let it cool, pitch our yeast, cap it, and let it sit for the next week to two weeks or however long it takes to ferment. Okay, that's what 10 gallons of mash looks like and what we just taught you that's all you need to know is to do that go ahead and see what uh, temperature this is at. okay we're gonna take our temp looks like 113 111 so this would take probably about a half hour 45 minutes to come down to about 90 degrees and then we'll pitch our yeast cap it off and let it sit till we gets ready to distill <laughs> Some people call that beating the heat out. Beating the heat out. <laughs> Don't know if you can see it, probably not, but steam's coming off. We're getting a little heat out of there. And we'll get a little more mixing in. Yeah. And Blending it up a little bit better. Mark Vince is just going to beat the heat out. All right. We just got to just under the 90 degree level. So we're about to pitch our yeast. That's a uh, 42 grams. 42 grams of that day day daddy red star yeast. Go ahead and pitch that in there. Yeah, that's right. With the power tool. Lay it down. <clears throat> Caps it off. And then once we've capped it off and locked it and sealed it, top off the airlock with just a little bit of water. Just so it floats. And before we know it, it should start bubbling. Oh, look at that. It's already doing a little click click. Country Rat here. We want to dedicate this video to a good friend of ours, Brent Weeks. Brent Weeks! Man, it, um, there's no words. Rest there's in peace. There's no fucking words. Man. Rest in peace, Brent Weeks. This is for you. We're making this 
I know you love some whiskey and we're making the best and this is the Brent Weeks batch. R.I.P. Brent Weeks. Peace, Brent Weeks. Love you. Thanks again for watching Country Rad. Make sure you subscribe. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Like it. Leave comments. Peace out, baby. Have a nice shot. Live life to the fullest. Moonshine, baby. Mm.